Welcome. Thank you I, very much, I, I want to kind of go back in time to about this time last year. You sat in government, uh, your party, the most dominant political organisation, of course, in the history of the state. Uh, you had won 78 seats in the 2007 general election. Fast forward today, you preside over 19 opposition TDs. You're the leader of Fianna Fáil. What is that like? Well, it's a new journey. It's a new chapter in my life. Um, it's, it's difficult. It's tough very low at the time. Uh, but when I took over the leadership of the party, I was under no illusions that that's the direction yeah. we were heading into. So in other words, before the election, I was under no illusions that we were going to suffer a very heavy defeat. That badly? Yes. Yeah. And you I do, knew it. You, yeah. I felt it. Uh, I knew it from meeting people in advance. So I knew that in the aftermath of the election, there was going to be a significant journey of renewal, of okay. meeting people. But also then, having said that, Ryan, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a job with opportunity. It's exciting. Um, it's interesting. I mean, just a month ago, I was down in Cork at a youth conference with 400 young people, yeah. very talented, very committed, very so, engaged. And for me then, the op I like looking at that audience, yes, that yeah. audience of young people, I'm yeah. saying, which among them will be TDs in the next five or six or seven or eight years? How Can I spawn a new generation of people who will become involved in political life and become engaged? That's the challenge, okay, that's the opportunity, to go from and that's the exciting part. I appreciate of that, and, and you're, you're revved that's, up and ready to go on that well, one. That's Seven, the positive side of it. Sure, 78, seats, well. 78 seats to 19. Uh, how did it happen? Do you think? Reflecting well, on... Well, I think there's a number of factors. Uh, obviously, the economic collapse, uh, mistakes we made. Uh, people were very angry. I mean, the, people's lives were destroyed in, in many instances. People lost their jobs. Uh, people very concerned about the prospects for their young as they come through college or as they come out of school. Are there jobs for them? Yeah. So, uh, you know, people were angry, um, understandably so. Yes. Uh, and, you know, th th that had an electoral impact without question. As well as that, I think it's fair to say over time uh, we were in government too long uh, and we made mistakes as a political party. When I, when I go around the country now meeting members yeah. of the party, and I, think, I don't think the members of the party made mistakes, I think we did. Uh, we being the levels. government. Yeah, and at the yeah. senior level what of the party, over time. What, if I, if what mistakes just, did you make? Because you've, you've brought it up now, so let's have a yeah, look at it. I just think, I think I was just like going to come to that. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think when the party was founded, yeah. and when I mentioned the members, I mean, they would say to me, look, my father said to me that we joined Fianna Fáil because it was a party of the working class, it was a party that advanced the cause of the working people. I think we lost that sense. Now, whether it's true or false is immaterial. The sense is that we lost that sense of being a party that had at its core the advancement of working people in this country. Now, I think that's something we have to rediscover. I think in, in a, a more specific did, did you, sense... I'm sorry, just to clarify, did you become the party of the, uh, the, the middle class too much or was it the, the, the building think, class, the commercial class? I think we associated class? with big business too much. Yeah, too much. Too much. I mean, other parties have too, but I just yeah. think I look after my own party and I have yeah. to try and get a sense. Okay. If you go back over history, I studied the, the foundation yeah, of the party. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have had great you know, um, interest in it and attraction to the selfless nature of the founding members, you know, yeah. the likes of... Um, uh, Frank Aiken or De Valera or La Masse and people who made a difference to the so country. So you lost touch so with, with reality. So I think there's an, no, look, there's positives and there's negatives. I yeah. just want to, there's always two sides to a story. But it's the sense of how people feel about you is actually the most important in the end of the day. And you, that's what you people became, began to you, feel. Yeah, you became reviled um, as, a, as, a, as, a, um, as a government. I mean, you saw that. I mean, 78 to, to 19. Well, it tells uh, its own story. It tells uh, its own story. No, so. um, and I, I think you have to learn from that. Yeah. And you have to learn from the crisis. Um, and I think we're, we're in the process of doing that, not just in terms of the party, but in terms of the country. I want to bring you back to the bank guarantee, September 2008, and you received a phone call. It's now a legendary phone call. It was a, the cabinet were being spoken to in their homes at, at all hours. Yeah. Just a few specific quick, quick questions, and we'll, we'll trash it out, if that's OK, Michal. Uh, so where were you when you got the phone call that night? I was in New York. I was in the United States. OK, and what uh, time of the day was it? to board a plane uh, at evening time. So would that have been around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock? So it's probably corresponds to 2 o'clock in the morning. In the morning, OK. Yeah. So who was on the other end of the line? Uh, an official. An official? An official on the okay. end of the line. You don't know the name of the official? I don't have it, no, no. Yeah. And the what person did, in, in the Taoiseach's office. In the, so the Taoiseach's office. Yeah. And what uh, did that person say to you? That person said that the, 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 the Taoiseach um, you know, has asked for an incorporeal meeting. Now, incorporeal meeting is a meeting where you don't have a physical presence of people around yeah. the table and that they're to take the decision um, to guarantee bank deposits, um, loans and so on, liabilities, um, as in from the opening of business tomorrow morning. They're going to make that announcement before the opening of business in the morning. Just to give you an... Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to just yeah. concentrate on the phone call respectfully yeah. and then we'll, we'll deal with the and I said, re it, reflection. And after. I said it has my approval. It I, has your I approved approval. Of it. Did, did you question it? Um, not with the official, no. I, no. Felt, I felt something had to be done. 
I mean, even to this day, I would argue strongly that the alternative to not guaranteeing the banks but would you have been But you just said, you said, I agree. And then you put the phone well, down. Can I say, the, can I go yeah. back on to, to why? It was a very interesting day in the United States. It was the day that the TARP, which was the Troubled Assets Relief Programme, failed to get through Congress. The impact on Wall Street was enormous yeah. and devastating. I think it was the largest uh, loss in Wall Street, I think, in many a year, in decades, all because of the absence of decision-making. Um, and as far as I was, you know, my sense of it, obviously, Brian Lennon was at the coal, force, coal face sure. with the Taoiseach, uh, with the director, oh, sorry, the governor of the central bank, mm. uh, the NTMA, all those were, were there at the time. Uh, and their call was, as, as the, gov the present governor would say, uh, Professor Honahan, uh, that if, if before the opening of business the following morning, if something fundamental did not happen, mm. um, we were facing the collapse of the modern payment system as we know it. People wouldn't have been able to get money from the ATM machines, wages, salaries. You know, it would have been very, yeah, very and, serious. And, th and that, that is a very, serious thing. It would be very, very serious. To, listen, that's Armageddon coming at you at the other end of the phone. Were you sold a dummy, though? No. I think Could I'd, you not have come I'd back? Still, I would still read. I, I read articles about it still to this day. I read what's going on across the Eurozone. I read what's going on in did America. Did you ever bring up your concerns uh, at the Cabinet table when you got back from New York? Yeah, we were back the following morning. I flew in the following and morning. And did you say, lads, this is crazy, well, you're no, guaranteeing we, too much? We had a formal ca Cabinet meeting that morning. Yeah. People sometimes forget that. It wasn't all the two o'clock in the morning stuff. Yeah. You, there was a meeting the following morning. Um, and, of course, we asked about collateral and, you know, what's the, the danger. At the time, everyone was saying it's a liquidity problem. The banks can't get money. Uh, they're going to run out of cash um, shortly. Um, it then went into the Doyle itself, if you yes. remember, so it had to be legislated for by all of the members of the Doyle. And, in fact, other parties okay. voted for it at the time. Fine Gael did, Sinn Féin did at the time. Um, and we don't, we don't have misgivings we, and all we, of that. We don't have a heap of time, so forgive no. me for bouncing line. I don't mean to, to be cajoling into different, but we need to try and get as much as we can because yeah. there's so much to talk about uh, and we haven't had you on the programme. So yeah. I, I do want to ask you about Brian Cowan and I want to ask you to, to, to characterise for us your relationship with him. Was he a friend or was he just a colleague or was he a mixture of the two? He was a friend. I mean, when I say uh, the, the definition, I had a good relationship with Brian yeah. Cowan. I think it picked up and developed when I was Minister for Enterprise and he was Minister for okay. Finance. I found him a very decent and level-headed person to deal with. He didn't like being bounced into situations. He liked an honest relationship. He must so, have hated that so night in September. What so. I mean by that is he didn't like you, if, if you were a minister trying to bounce him through media, yeah. looking for money for a particular project okay. or whatever. He, he wanted to see the case you were making. So, for example, when it came to setting up a venture capital fund for Enterprise Ireland to help start new companies, he listened when it came to research investment, which I was very keen on. Uh, he responded well to those overtures we're, when I was Minister of Enterprise. So we developed a good relationship okay. then. And like, he appointed me Minister for Foreign Affairs. Uh, and again, when you're Minister for Foreign Affairs, you actually have a close enough relationship sure. with the teacher when it comes to European matters and when it comes to international and global were issues. Were you ever part of his Doyle's famous uh, bar, Doyle Bar lobby? No. Um, and when you're a teacher and when you're Minister for Foreign Affairs, you, know, you don't have a whole lot of time for that. But I was not. No, I wasn't a friend in that yeah. sense. Were you, were you uh, uh, uncomfortable with that lobby? No. It wasn't an issue for you. Not an issue for me at all. Um, a year ago this week, the IMF and, as you know, their colleagues, they rolled into town to deliver the so-called bailout. I don't, I don't know if that's the right term, but anyway, 85 billion euro later. Um, it's a bailout of the country. And members of your cabinet, your colleagues, were denying it, you know, uh, as you know. Um, when the denials were going on, and then, of course, the denials were proved to be, frankly, ridiculous, and some would say laterally deceitful, wh what was going through your mind? Well, at the time, I, I think, yeah, it was very badly managed. Um, by but, whom? By all of us. Uh, I'm, I'm, Were I'm, you headless think, chickens, though? I no, mean, I think... So the, what happened? No, no, there were two issues happened, really. Yeah, but why One, weren't you talking to each other? Well, hold well, on a second. I mean, bottom line is this. You either borrow from the bond markets or you borrow from an official institution like the European Union facility. Or you just tell the people the truth. Uh, and I tell you why, because two things. The ECB were bouncing government into it. I think Brian Lenhin at the time was anxious to get a contingent facility, a standby facility. Uh, so there was a resistance to go in. And, the, the more, and then the second crucial point was that you don't say to the, to the Europeans or to the ECB, yeah, we're going to go into a deal just because you've asked us to. We want to find out what the colour of your money is. What are the terms and conditions? What are the parameters of a the, deal? The that of, was the, a lot of people lot felt, of, Michal, you sure know yourself, because you're, you're, yeah. you're a decent man and you know that a lot of people felt that they were, they were they hoodwinked by your, they the government. The, and a lot of cabinet yeah. colleagues, as you know from recent yeah, television programmes, did you feel hoodwinked? Not I mean, personally, I wasn't on programmes at the time or anything like that. But the, doesn't the matter about being on programmes. No, I felt myself that basically the Taoiseach would have said, and he said this to the Cabinet, look, 
Uh, and I felt he was honourable in this respect. Go on. Um, that basically his position was he didn't want... If you take corporation tax, you take a whole range of what issues. What did he say? Go on. He, did, he basically said he didn't want to agree to any going into any deal or even be part of any discussions without knowing in advance the parameters of those discussions. Okay. The easiest thing to say is, yeah, we'll, we'll go straight in and, and, and sort of sell everything off and give away everything. Do you think he was... Um, uh, Brian but I think in retrospect, in yes. retrospect, I think... If you look at the four-year plan, the national recovery plan, we had all that in readiness already anyway. To be fair to the IMF and, and the European Union Commission, yeah. they accepted that plan Would, and they agreed okay, to bankroll the plan I, in can, essence. Can I use street parlance for a second? And do, and do you think that Brian Cowan and his approach and his communication approach to that whole time, that he made a bags of it? I think, I think he did the fundamentals honestly and rightly. I think there's all those issues about communication. I think Brian did not do spin. He... He just didn't believe in optics or perception. And are you saying that uh, as that, a negative or a plus? That's a point, a very good question. If you read Peter Mandelson's... But, but no, about, why don't you right? answer the question? Because I'm going to. You I'm know, going right, to. Well, yeah. It's a plus. But, OK. It's a plus. You've just... Yeah. It's a plus. It's a plus, because I think... Myself, it's a plus. So if he's bad at spin, no, he's bad yeah. at optics, and then people no, said, no. he's spending too much time in the when bar, you say, he's not telling us the truth, yeah. and people started going mad about you, him. Uh, he's, he's in a lose-lose. We, lose. we can have too much spin in, 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 in politics, too. We can so it's the right amount of spin. I think you have to... You must communicate properly with people and effectively with people. I think there are communication issues. Do you... OK, here's a straight question to you. Do you think... There's a lot of people watching tonight and they're in the horrors you know I'm talking to people on the radio who are watering down their milk yeah. because they can't afford a carton a man sent me a photograph of three euro seventy and a photocopy and a picture of his three children and he said this is all I have left I don't want Christmas this year this is this mm. is Ireland 2011 do you feel any sense of personal responsibility for the decisions you made with your colleagues around that table for so many years, and given the way and how banjax the country seems to be at the moment, do you feel almost like apologising? Do you feel that... I feel very bad about that, and that's why I'm still in politics. I decided not to walk away from politics. I felt an obligation to people, an obligation to, to, to those even within the party. But well, what, what do you say about as, as, a, as a prominent minister well, all I can that do is, uh, no, but What do you say to yeah. those people who are in the horrors tonight? As the minister, whose people will say was part of a cabinet that kind of wreaked chaos on the country. Well, I um, think there's a broader story to it now as well. I mean, all over the... We, we, it's not just Ireland, but I would say it to that person and to people generally, I understand where they're coming from. Sure. They are angry. I went before the people again. People in my area elected me back in to do the best I can, to try and bring solutions to the table. To try, and that's what I'm hoping to do and will do as an opposition leader, is not just to criticise for the sake of criticising, okay. but to try and bring solutions. So, for example, on mortgage arrears, we have brought solutions to the table. We have brought legislation from the opposition benches. Government have accepted partially it, so, some of it. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. All I can do as a politician is to try and help be constructive and bring solutions. That's why I stayed in politics. Okay. I'm committed to public life. It's in my bones. Yeah. I want to do something of benefit. I would like to think in the individual ministries I served in, whether it's special needs in education, whether it's a smoking ban in health, yeah. whether it's small business and, and, and new companies in, in enterprise, or indeed in foreign affairs in terms of, 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 of bringing a stronger economic focus. I've left something of value behind in some of those departments. Now we're in a very severe crisis, not sure. only here but across Europe. I think we need as many people as possibly to work together in the interest of the country and I, the people I, of the country. I was watching it during the week. You put up some feisty performances um, as, as uh, well, I was going to say, leader of the opposition. I don't know if you are that. Um, is that your Are you leader of the opposition? I'm leader of the Fianna Fáil party. Is uh, that the leader of the... I don't no, know. No, no, it's not. No, okay. it's not. No, I, I mean, in that, fairness, no, there's the opposition. There's a technical group. You have... Yeah. Anyway, uh, sorry, that's, that's you semantics. Have, uh, but, but the point is that... as Joe Higgins as, and Shane Ross Of course, but as leader of Fianna Fáil, I watched you. And I couldn't help thinking that it's the government's first budget coming up in the next few weeks. It's going to be a, a, a very, very tough time. And you kept throwing things at them and you were saying this, that and the other. But the feeling for people, I think, watching possibly was that you're, you're so heavily tainted by being a minister and a member of that government that a lot of people, rightly or wrongly, feel had caused all the problems. So you talk about mortgage relief and, and trying to fix it. They will say, well, we wouldn't have had to deal with all of this if the property bubble hadn't been inflated by the policies of your government. And therefore, until you're gone and that ancien regime has gone, Fianna Fáil will never be able to renew because you're just too contaminated by that. Do you see where I'm coming from? I do, yeah, but I've been elected by people, so I'm in the parliament. And that's the most important point yeah. to make on that. And also, I still, you know, when you take the WMS by-election with David McGuinness, sure. I canvassed with David and I, I, a lot. I was out every night mm. and people opened their doors to us. Uh, we listened to what people had to say. We talked. People listened and people and, spoke and we are, as well. We, we are heartened uh, by Sean Gallagher's performance. 
Not, not, I mean, Sean was ran as an independent. I thought, I thought he brought something new to the campaign, yeah. coming from an enterprise background. Um, I would have had a, a, an engagement with that as an enterprise minister. There was yeah. another... I mean, you had it with Sean O'Sullivan earlier. Yes. There's a very exciting part of Ireland going on yes. all the time yeah. in terms of new companies and technology, in food, um, in life sciences, and they're, they're selling products and services that are solving problems around the world. Yeah. We, ha we need more of that. Do you and find, so do you find so, it yeah, hard? I think Sean Gallagher brought a bit of that. Yeah. But equally, you know, I worked with Michael D. Higgins, very, very popular parliamentarian. Yeah. I was a foreign affairs minister. He was uh, allegedly my opposition, but he really wasn't an opposition. He was a genuine friend in the sense that he would contribute yeah. to issues in a helpful way because he's a knowledgeable individual. So yeah. I felt it was, in that sense, you know, I welcome Michael D. Higgins as president of Ireland. He's going to be a great president. I think Sean Gallagher made a, a strong contribution to that campaign in terms of what he brought to it. And I think he has a future ahead of him in whatever he chooses to do. And are you sorry Gay Byrne didn't run? Well, I've learned one thing, never be ringing the late, late host on, on, on an August weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, someone said to me during the weekend, and it, it's, kind of, it's facetious, right? But, yeah. but roll with it for the, in the spirit of which it's meant. Which was, and the comment was, the next Fianna Fáil Taoiseach hasn't been born yet. Um, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you, you could obviously say, well, I'll be it, or you could say, well, he's probably in senior infants, but wh what, what, whether Fianna Fáil as, as a political uh, power, power in this country, it's, it's, it's a fascinating time for your party. I may never be Taoiseach. That's what you're coming from. Do you think you will point. be? I may never be. I don't know. Do you want to be? Uh, of course I'd love to be Taoiseach, to do things differently. Are you realistic enough to... But I, what I said to you is, I on. would like my, to be measured in a different way. Um, what does that And mean? I said that to you earlier at the beginning. Yeah. You, you know, I think we want to change the way we do politics in the country and all of that. But by and large, as a leader, yeah. it's quite interesting. It's quite exciting. I have an opportunity to shape a new political movement, a new political community. I have an opportunity to allow, facilitate, nurture younger people into politics. And as I said to you at that youth conference, I hope at the end of my term as leader of Fianna Fáil, people can see a new generation of politicians, a new generation of people committed to their country and to political life, fresh ideas, new ideas, and a different and approach Michal, to life. What, what that, to me, would be a measure of success. In conclusion. And, and in many ways more substantive than what I, happens to you personally. I, I appreciate that. that. Um, what's, what's your fundamental message to Michael Noonan when he's uh, addressing the nation with his budget? I think my fundamental message would be jobs, uh, I think we, we have to revisit the fact that there's obviously huge unemployment and so on, but I think we really have to give a jobs focus to the budget, yeah. and I think something has to be done for those in mortgage arrears. OK. Uh, thanks for coming to see us, and uh, it's been good to have you on the programme. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.